Hello, and welcome to another installment of Dirty Lines, with Ionic. Today's episode is a how-to on creating portraiture from reference. The first part of the video is a time-lapse of the 5-hour video that follows. Let's dive in, shall we? A solid workflow is the key to producing anything successfully. With that said, a good way to start the process of drawing a portrait from reference is by breaking your subject up into simple shapes and then by gently laying down your landmarks. Landmarks include top of the head, the bottom of the chin, the extents of the nose and the position of the eyes, all while trying to keep the proportionality between them the same as the source material. Once you are satisfied by the placement of your simple shapes and landmarks, you can now go in and start to refine your image. Traditionally, this is best done by working from dark to light areas. Remember that there is no one way to render an image. Ionic is showing you only a few ways he goes about this process. The trick in finding what process works best for you is by trying many. In Ionic's case, the mixture of several techniques suits his style. The more techniques you learn, the more you can utilize them in your work. Don't be afraid of trying new things, even if the outcome is undesirable. Learn from the failure, and try again. Image flipping is a great way to check for shifting elements, such as a drifting eye, or a lopsided head. When an image is flipped, errors will present themselves. A good practice is to flip your image regularly as to not allow those errors to create more errors. At this point Ionic is finessing the values in his image to more match those of the reference image. Don't allow yourself to become frustrated when this process proves to be a difficult one. This is one of those skills that takes time and practice to be honed. As you can see Ionic is reworking the values in specific areas of the image with the brush tool, along with tweaking the layer's overall value with tools found in the image adjustment menu. Portraits can be extremely difficult. Small deviations in proportion can yield extreme differences in likeness. There are many techniques out there for creating more accurate renditions of likeness. One such technique is gridding out the image. Resources on this skill are easily found on the internet. Ionic opted to freehand his portraits. He has allowed for a certain amount of variance for the likeness of the subject. No one is perfect and ultimately the image has to stand up on its own without the reference. At the end of the day you should try for a visually pleasing image when a perfect likeness cannot be achieved. Here on the final rendering Ionic has decided to try a more clean underdrawing. This decision was made in hopes of creating a more accurate final image. Unfortunately due to improper proportion judging, the likeness of this final image began to deviate a great deal from its source material. Once Ionic realized that this image was not going to be easily saved without an extreme reworking, he decided to use the reference more loosely, referring to the source material for more lighting and color cues than anything else. This is a great example of what happens when an image goes awry. Although the likeness of this final rendering is moderate at best, the conclusive product was salvaged by accepting that fact and adjusting to more make it visually pleasing. A digital art environment isn't better or worse than practical mediums. Digital art opens up a seemingly endless amount of possibilities that can at first glance look like cheating to analog artists. Once the magical veneer of digital arts is brushed off, one can see that it is only a different process of art creation. Learn to embrace the tool set given, and not hold it to the same limitations of its predecessor. Color for this final portrait. 
was laid in with a hue adjustment and what is known as a color layer. A color layer in conjunction with a black and white layer below it can be very powerful. The color blend mode preserves the luma of the bottom layer while adopting the hue and chroma of the top layer. One can freely paint in the color layer affecting only the color of the image and not the value. This technique does however require a decently accurate value range on the below layer to be effective. This process can be profoundly efficient for laying in color due to it being a non-destructive method. A non-destructive workflow is excellent for an iterative pipeline. At this point the images are complete. Ionic will take a few seconds to move and orientate the images for presentation purposes. We here at Dirty Lines hope this video was informative and helpful. As stated in the beginning of this video, the portion following is at normal speed and not annotated. Thank you for watching Dirty Lines.